Hello and welcome to the Class Echo Build video. In front of you are the kit contents, the main face and shell, 12 metric screws with an Allen key, and 5 zip ties. To complete the kit, you will need to provide the electronic components, including an Arduino Mega 2560 R3, a 4.3 inch next-gen display, some DuPont jumper cables, and one rotary encoder. Let's begin the build process by assembling the back shell components. Position the Arduino so that the USB connector is facing the hole in the back shell. Look for the four screw holes in the shell that line up with the mounting holes in the Arduino. Line up the Arduino and begin screwing it in using the 5mm M3 machine screws. Note that you do not want to screw it in tight. The board should still wiggle freely after the screw is in place. Repeat that step for the other screws. After all four screws are in, very carefully give them a light tighten. Stop turning when you start to feel a little resistance, otherwise you could risk damaging the screw holes or Arduino. Beginning the wiring process, you need nine DuPont jumper connectors in total, four male to male, and five male to female. It will help with your cable management if you separate them together like this. First, let's wire our power lines. Separate one pair of red and brown male-to-male -male wires and one pair of black and white male-to-female wires. Locate the power rails of the Arduino. We will be using four ports on this power rail. The in or voltage in that goes to the encoder, ground that goes to the encoder, ground that goes to the display, and five volts that goes to the display. Connect the white positive encoder wire to V-in and the black encoder ground to ground. Subsequently, connect the brown display wire to ground and the red display wire to 5 volts. Slip a zip tie into the bracket behind the power rail. The zip tie, when tightened, will help ensure that the power wires stay in place. Notice also that the bare terminals of all connectors are facing outward and not each other. These steps are to prevent short circuit situations. Cable management is very important in a project with many wires. Bend the encoder wires out of the way and feed the display wires through the U brackets on the shell. Let's begin installation of the display data lines. Fish a pair of yellow and orange male-to-male -male wires through the U brackets. Things get a little tight so you will have to push them through one connector at a time. Let's connect the data wires. Look for pin 19 and pin 18, which are RX1 and TX1. Connect the orange wire to pin 19 and the yellow wire to pin 18. The final set of connections on the board are for the encoder. Pin 2 and pin 3 are for the encoder rotary inputs, and pin 4 is for the encoder button. In this case, we are using gray, purple, and blue male to female wires. Time for some cable management. Bend the encoder wires over again and you will start to see a common wire throughway. By zip tying these together, you will help prevent your data lines or encoder wires from becoming unplugged. Add a second zip tie for good measure. Each next-gen display comes with a JST-XH to DuPont connector adapter. You will be plugging your male-to-male -male DuPont connector into this. To start, plug your red male 5 volt line into the red line of the adapter and the brown ground line into the black line of the adapter. For the data lines, plug the yellow data line into the yellow line of the adapter and the orange data line into the blue line of the adapter. To 
time to do some insulation. Using some tape, and it doesn't really matter what tape you use unless it's conductive, wrap the connections between the Arduino and the adapter. This is crucial because you don't want a 5 volt connector floating around with an open terminal beside the display, which has lots of open components. You are over the halfway point now, so let's assemble the front face. You will need the display, main bracket, and four 5mm machine screws for this. Turn the front face over and carefully put the next-gen display inside the hole meant for it. It should be oriented so that the display connector faces away from the encoder hole. Begin screwing the display in. It is critical that you do not over-tighten these screws. It could damage the display. Exactly like the Arduino, just screw it in enough that you feel a little bit of resistance. The back holes are inaccessible from the front. Luckily, there is an access from the bottom of the device where you can fit the Allen wrench through to screw in those points. Once the display is where you want it, go around and give it a very, very light tighten. It's time to start mounting the device. On the top of the Honeycomb Alpha, there are four screws we will be working with. Start by unscrewing the second screw from the left. Next, unscrew the fourth screw from the left. We need that second screw for its length, so we are going to put the fourth screw where the second screw was and swap them. Now we can take out the 5th and 6th screws. Looking from the back of the Alpha, align the main body of the Class Echo with the screw holes that you just made. You can start placing the screws back where they belong. Screw them in by hand manually as much as you can. This is the only real tricky part of this installation. When using the Allen key, it is very important that the Allen key does not come in contact with the circuit board of the display. Therefore, you are going to have to position it in a way that does not interfere. If you have a 2.5mm Allen screwdriver, that would work best. Otherwise, work patiently and you will get the job done. Installing the encoder is very straightforward. I have an EC11 variant here. I'm going to place it in. First, put the washer on the front, then the final nut to hold it all together. It doesn't hurt to use a pair of pliers to crank it down just a little bit more. Let's start making the final connections. Position the back shell as shown. At this point, you can plug the display adapter into the display. Plug the white V-in lead into the 5 volt input of the encoder, and the black ground lead into the ground of the encoder. Plug pins 2 and 3 into the encoder outputs, and pin 4 goes to the encoder switch. This is the EC11 encoder, and you can also use the KY040. Check out this pinout guide for a better look at hooking those up. The Arduino and the display both have their own separate firmware. Plug the Arduino in and then refer to the firmware updating guide on information of how to upload it. You will know that the firmware is successfully updating when you see the TX and RX lights on the Arduino flashing rapidly, as shown. In the firmware guide, you are brought through the steps to load the display firmware onto the display SD card. Insert the card into the SD slot and then turn it on. You should be greeted by this message and then an upload sequence. My experience is that the upload doesn't always start on the first try. If that's the case, simply unplug the Arduino and plug it back in to try again. 
Once the upload is completed, unplug the Arduino and then take the SD card out. Use the remaining zip ties to cable manage in a way that you feel best. Making sure to double check all your connections, you can now finally put the back lid on. There are two screw holes in the back that will accept two 10mm M3 screws. When you get your front plate from shipping, chances are the carbon vinyl decal has come out of the hole just a little bit. Use the head of the screw to pat it back down again and once you screw it in, it should hold back in place just fine. After that, screw in your final two 10mm M3 screws. Some encoders come with knobs, some don't. In this case, this is the third party knob that belongs on a guitar that I really liked, so I purchased this one. And that's it. I hope you really enjoyed this build process. Feel free to contact me with any questions or problems or concerns you may have, and I hope you enjoy your very own Class Echo.